When I blue, blue magic, magic, bro, I know niggas on that. I blue stand magic. by it. I guarantee it. Blue magic. That's what you want, bro. Blue Cardiologist magic. Dr. Scott Davis, thanks for being here with us. This blue morning. magic. So push-ups. Yeah, explain this for us. How does this work? Drop blue blue magic, right? Uh -huh. So interesting study. So the, the, the smart people at Harvard mm -hmm. did a study. They blue looked magic. at a group of blue magic. firefighters in the state of Indiana. That's a brand and new. so they had 1,100 blue magic. men. Okay, that they studied I over a 10 year period. And the average age was about 40 years old, so it wasn't a 25 year old blue magic. firefighter guys. I mean, it, was, it had a good, broad, blue magic. you know, selection of men. That's and they, they followed them over, over uh, like, a 10 magic. year period, and they I found that the ability to do push ups had a direct correlation in their blue cardiovascular magic. risk. Okay. In that, blue if you were able to do over blue 40 magic. push ups, blue magic. Blue magic. Bro, when you step in and you sell this, and you're telling people that this is CMOS gel, yeah. Dr. Sadie approved. You fucking up the brain. What the fuck are you talking about? It's copyright infringement. This, this is the Conjures Crispus, the only one in North America. When you present people this, this is copyright infringement. This is hair grease. God dang it! The words you use, I don't like the words you use. They're disrespectful. Like the words you got today to chop your head with, like it's disrespectful. I just call it red sea moss. How about that red sea moss? Y'all want red sea moss? Come get y'all some red sea moss. Listen, I don't give a f you call it blue dog. Okay? As long as you don't call it blue magic. When I blue, blue magic, magic, bro, I know niggas on that. I blue stand magic. by it, I guarantee it. Blue magic. That's what you want, bro. <laughs> For a long time, African-centered scholars and academics have pressurized Egyptian antiquities to allow for the testing of skin pigmentation. This can be done via the measurement of the concentration of melanin to ascertain the exact skin tone of mummified individuals. Understandably, Afrocentric anthropologists have always been confident in the knowledge that ancient Egyptians will cluster among the same racial stock as modern Africans. Esteemed historian and physicist, Dr. Cheikh Anta Diop, developed a simple melanin dosage test that would be able to return the exact living complexion from any mummy based on a minuscule sample of the epidermis. What's important to note here is that melanin concentration is responsible for skin pigmentation. The more melanocytes present in skin, the darker an individual will be. Diop himself stated, although the epidermis is the main site of the melanin, the melanocytes penetrating the derm at the boundary between it and the epidermis, even where the latter has mostly been destroyed by the embalming materials, show a melanin level which is non-existent in the white-skinned races. In the case of the mummies sampled by Diop, in spite of some significant melanin degradation, they still possessed a concentration of melanocytes well within the dark-skinned ranges, normal for black Africans, but considerably beyond the accessible range for Eurasian peoples. Regarding the origin of his samples, Diop continues, The samples I myself analyzed were taken in the physical anthropology laboratory of the Musée de l'Homme in Paris off the mummies from the Marietta excavations in Egypt. For two years past, I have been vainly begging the curator of the Cairo Museum for similar samples to analyze. No more than a few square millimeters of skin would be required to mount a specimen. Naturally, his attempts to advance this test have faced staunch resistance from the gatekeepers of Egyptology, who only benefit from the lack of transparency in a shameless attempt to perpetuate the myth of racial ambiguity. This allows them to make estimations and promote reconstructions that are illogically and politically based on the current ethnically divergent population of Egypt, as opposed to their actual complexion based on a consistent and measurable variable that is easily acquired. However, more recently, during an excavation headed by the German Institute for Archaeology in Cairo in the year 2000, researchers sought to carry out anthropological and paleopathological analysis of the human remains from three tombs of the nobles of the necropolis of Thebes West. An additional study was conducted by Makota and Vermeeren, published in 2005. The study sought to test the quality of methods of rehydration for mummified tissue. In the study, samples were taken from a pool of 273 mummies dated from the New Kingdom. Samples were taken from each organ of each of the mummies. During analysis of the skin samples, biologists noted that skin sections showed particularly good tissue preservation. Although much of the epidermis had already separated from the dermis, the remaining epidermis often was preserved well. The basal epithelial cells were packed with melanin as expected for specimens of negroid origin. In essence, the epidermis was consistent with black or negroid African groups based on the density of the melanin. This was the only conclusive assumption made alluding to ethnicity during the study since its purpose was to compare methods of rehydration. This objective conclusion gives a silent nod to the tireless efforts of Diop and his protégés, who always knew that given the opportunity to test, the ancient Egyptians would be proven to be amongst the same ethnic stock as their African brethren. Thank you for joining me on The King's Monologue. Purple phase not only regrows beta cells, 
but a part of the mechanism it uses to regrow beta cells is melanogenesis. Yes, in the world where your melanin, your pigment system has been attacked, you now have an equalizer. Purple phase, AmericanHealer.website. What are you waiting for? Go to AmericanHealer.website now and get you some. A way to make learning the information from the books a little bit more easy, but you don't want to negate the books, right? Because the video is a studying tool for the books. Exactly. Exactly. That's the algorithms. No, 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 no. If you type that, you ain't going to find it. This is actually how it's spelled. This is actually how it's spelled. This is actually how it's spelled because the um the pun or the comparison or the central figure in the book um as i'm talking about how a how our bodies work with the algae so a lot of um a lot of the ideas around that set of books is that the algae is the central repository and creator for all forms of pigment on the planet so this is kind of how even this conversation for some people it might be like they going a little off topic but no we're not off topic because the algae is what recycles carbon right you have what's called the carbon sink right algae recycle carbon and produce majority of the the, the pigments on the planet those pigments are then incorporated into the higher life forms, right? So from the algae, you go to the, the, the small aquatic animals up to the larger ones. And then on land, you go from algae to land plants. And then from the land plants, you go to from the small animals all the way up. But the algae is you know, um, and, and phytoplankton, for the people that hear that terminology being thrown around, phytoplankton are a type of algae. So when you say algae, phytoplankton is included in that space, right? But that is the beginning of the food source on the planet. That's also the beginning of crystallizing light or the process of making hydrated carbons right hydrated carbons right carbohydrates carbohydrates um pigments all of that kind of stuff begins in the algae kingdom right even if we take it back to um oxygen right oxygen on this planet starts in the algae kingdom so the, the play on words is algae and rhythm, right? So, so really what I'm writing is the algorithm for human life is the algae rhythm. So the algae rhythm of the planet is the plan is the rhythm of nature, right? Which is the reason why we have our specific. Now people could go get sea moss anywhere. But you can only get blue magic at AmericanHealer.website. That's our special blend, which is based on these nuanced understandings of the symbiotic relationship between the algae on the planet and our bodies and how our bodies are built around these algae. Right. So that's why it's not a, it's not a spell, you know, it's not a. Um, a typo is that's that's how we spelled it you know what i'm saying algae algae right or or algae and uh rhythm the pole and then obviously if you fast forward to the books we're talking about today i have the pulse of the culture right because 
life runs on beats, right? Life runs on beats, pulses, rhythms, right? That's what life is about, movement. If we go into This is a big this is a big book to 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 have to pull to pull a reference. <laughs> That's why I be saying I don't forgot more things about the human body than most people will ever learn. Um if we go back to the origin of the term aura, right? There are there are some tricky spaces to go back to that you may not think of that you may not think of when you think of the term aura. Right? You may not think of the Bible when you think of the term aura, right? But in actuality, the Bible is a part of the root. The Bible is a part of the root. If we're tracking down the history and the historicity of the term aura. Right, because we know that if you are into or interested in or have ever done any of the research on ancient Egypt in any capacity or or the Bible, you know that there's only a certain length of time that you can study one without running into the other. Right. Because they are both intertwined forever. Right. And if you add the Quran into the mix, it becomes even crazier. Meaning, if you speak to the average person that's into the study of ancient Egypt, they'll tell you they don't need to study the Bible because most of the Bible stories are taken from ancient Egypt. I don't necessarily have a, a a beef with that, right? Um, obviously, people of the Bible, when I say people of the Bible, people that only strictly tend for religious purposes, usually to confine their study to the Bible, they would, you know, they would, they, they would probably have some pushback. But when you bring the Quran into play, the Quran actually adds a semi contemporary piece of information that changes the outlook in the relationship between the Bible and ancient Egypt. The Quran offers the statement that in the Old Testament, the believers, the followers, the people who live their lives the historic characters or the actual humans, right, from the Torah, their God was actually Osiris. right this is this is in the quran right and they say that the beef or the discrepancy between the people of the torah and the people of the later chapters new testament things like that is the the divide in ideology surrounding osiris and the newer concept of jesus right or the son of god right so there's a lot of food for content in terms of 
infinite debates that can continue to happen and, and in some regard may be chasing our tail to, to an extent, right? But with the term aura, right, when we go back um, for the history or the historicity of it, and we go back to the Bible, we go back to the Torah, right, which are the the major the major portion of the Old Testament. You have the term "Let there be light," right? Let there be light, right? Let there be light, and that word "light." is pronounced the same way as the root for aura right it's pronounced r right if you get back into the the more semitic right r right when you get the etymology of that word because you, you kind of got to really do your homework with these things right that r also has a significant definition because the definition is a box or a cube or a square right a box cube or square so the term light in the bible which creates the entire universe in terms of life and, and um, we can liken it to the creation of cells that were able to interpret the electromagnetic spectrum in terms of consciousness, right? Whole nother conversation. Whole nother conversation. We're gonna we're gonna keep it keep it grounded, at least as much as we can, right? But the term R, which means light, and it also means a square, a cube, or a box, right? gives you the early understanding that let there be light is it has a specifics to it it has specificity to it right and this is where geometry comes in because light comes from a specific geometry the square right the cube the box right and it would be one thing if this was just if this was just religious fervor or, or mythology that would be one thing right but you fast forward 2,000 years from the inception or the supposed inception of the Bible right and now we have a modern day understanding that structure is everything, right? Structure is everything. Structure is everything. When you come to cells and subcellular behavior, right? Biochemistry, everything is about structure, right? A lot of us are becoming more and more familiar with the term structure water. Right? We're becoming more familiar with the term structured water. So we understand that there is, in our body, there's H2O, water, right? Then, take it a step further, in chemistry, right? Chemistry-wise, you have H2O. That's two hydrogens attached to one oxygen that, that gives you your water molecule. Okay, a step further, and you add another oxygen in there right so you have two hydrogens attached to two oxygens h2o2 that's hydrogen peroxide okay your body produces both right water and hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide though is a free radical so your body needs antioxidants to deal with the production of hydrogen peroxide or enzymes that function in that same capacity. Anyway, H2O, water, H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. The next step in that structural motif 
is what we know of as structured water, H3O2. So now we add another hydrogen atom to that hypothetical compound, right? You have three hydrogens for two oxygens. That gives you a molecule of what's known as structured water. Structured water is what your cells are made out of. Structured water is what? It's a thick gel type of, of water, if you will. Um, you could imagine it as jello, but clear like water, right? That's what each one of your cells are made out of, right? That's what each one of your cells are made out of. And that's where life, that's where life, light, electricity, magnetism, all get to come together and not only create your consciousness, but also facilitate the physical you, right? So what I'm saying is, is, there's a point in time where we have these separate pieces of information, right? We have the Bible saying that light, right? Which is also life coming into existence, light and life come into existence at the same time. Let there be light. We also have in the definition, in the word, in the articulation, right which is also supposed to be a gesture of god right whether you're dealing with kemet the bible what god speaks things into existence so in speaking things into existence we have to not only look at the surface level definition or context of the word and how it's used but also everything related and attached to it that may be under the surface per se so now we have a ancient pretext for understanding structure as the basis of life just like right now in order for you to understand biochemistry in today's world you have to understand the structure piece in order for you to understand how quantum mechanics relates to bio uh, to biology you got to understand the structural piece because light doesn't interact light only interacts with electrons and then electrons is what interacts with physicality right so light interacts with electrons that are a part of atoms that are that bond that form the bonds of atoms and by changing the vibration speed of those electrons everything around you is formed change destroy maintained etc everything happens from that relationship of light to electricity right and that's based on structure which is where geometry becomes so important in terms of biology or biochemistry <laughs> That book, Thicker Than Day Old Grits. Listen, this, this book right here is not even the, this is not even the hardcover. I got a hardcover version of this. That's my pride. That's my pride. That's my pride possession right there. My prize possession. My hardcover, Inky is the Soul of Osiris book. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Now, that's a good question. I have no idea because you can't even fully understand any one book without other books as reference material. And our minds are not designed that way. Right. But. So. On page 397 inside this book is where we begin that conversation right so i just wanted to um add that little caveat right so for people looking for the books with the information in it we kind of start the historical right the historical searching for little pieces Right. For little pieces um, going that far back. 
right? Because you do have certain mathematical signatures that are that are at play, right? Because not only do you have the let there be light, right? Where you're talking about, right? Where you're talking about this term, light, R, right? Which is the root of aura. It's the um, the, the the root where you can say like the symbol, the, the symbol for the periodic table for gold, AU is there, right? You got this square, this word meaning square or structure, right? For the origin of light, right? Now, if we take that into pure math, the math space, you know, a square is 360 degrees, right? So that's the relationship between a square and a circle, right? So the same passage that talks about the creation of life being rooted in a square, follow the terminology, the origin of life being rooted in a square also gives you the math 22 over 7. 22 over 7. What do you mean by 22 over 7? Meaning you have the creation of the universe supposedly happening through the Hebrew language. The Hebrew language is 22 letters. Right? 22 letters. So you're basically dividing those 22 letters over a seven day period, which is the revelation of the Hebraic alphabet in seven days. Right. So if you divide that 22 by seven, you get a uh, pi 3.14, blah, 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 blah. Right. Or the comedic version of pi the approximation of pi because they say 22 over 7 is not exactly equal pi right it's what they used in ancient egypt so you have the circle the mathematics of a circle and you have the actual physical definition of a square in terms of the creation of light so you have mathematics two different mathematics signatures in this early set of passages that talks to the creation of light or life right so so that's your early right now remember we're still talking about inflammation melanin so it should start to kick in like okay we get the references to melanin and light and, and This is why I was saying, right, early on, we had two different, and I never said the second one, right? I never laid out what the second one was. Remember I said we had two different uh, pieces of information in these books. So one was the fact that we have these other pigments in the skin that's doing the majority of the work. The second one, the second one over there, right? With the green man on it, the autodidact book. You see that? With the green man on it. as chew the fat right with the green man on it in that book we talk about that book takes it over the top right that book takes it over the top because what that book talks about is how i can't well i can't afford. in that book we speak specifically to chlorophyll Right, specifically to chlorophyll, but in all three of the books. And when I say all three of the books, I'm talking about I'm 
you see if it's a way to you can see it without yeah there you go this 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 works better the kitchen chemistry book if i hold it kind of sideways you can see it a little bit better right but the kitchen chemistry book along with these two books we really start the conversation about um vitamin a right vitamin a and let me see if i can pull this up let me see if i can pull up Okay, my keynote is acting a fool right now. There we go. I'm trying to pull up. I'm trying to find a nice little diagram. Because I think I had... I think I had some little diagrams. <laughs> hey, look at this. I forgot I made this for myself. <laughs> Yo, look at this. I forgot I made this for myself. I made myself my own think champs, not drink champs, but think champs flowers before y'all do me like y'all did Dr. Sabi. Hold on. All right, hold on. Okay, here we go. Right? These are, these are some of the different options right here. Right? These are some of the different options that are found in the human eye. Right. These are some of the different options found in the human eye. So you have peropsin, melanopsin, neuropsin. Um, you got photopsin, you got iodopsin, right? These are all different pigments, right, that you will find in the eye. Let me see here what we got going on. All right, I think that I think that um Yeah, this is probably going to be the best. This is probably going to be the best right here in terms of description. Now, here's what the old science is. The old science is those pigments, those options, right? Um, well, the oldest science is that there's two of those pigments. So the first two discoveries are rhodopsin and photopsin. Those are your rods and your combs, right? Those are your rods and your combs. Those are the pigments in your eye that allow you to interpret light as sight, right? Now, as science goes on, we find more options. Right, iodopsin, melanopsin, uh, panopsin, neuropsin, etc. Right, so that's the first thing. As science goes on, we find more opsins. Right, the second thing is the second thing is, is 
as science goes on, we find out those options are not just in our eyes. Right? So two things. We find out that options are not just in our eyes. They're all throughout the skin. But we also find out that the family of options are much bigger than what we thought. Right? So that's two things that we find out that we didn't know. We didn't know as far as 50 years ago. Like this is relatively new information, right? So anything that you would have read thus far on the science of the aura being a real thing, being a fake thing or curly in photography, even none of those things would address the real science. So I know there's people that's like, oh, yeah, there's curly in photography where people are photographing people's auras. No. No. That's not exactly getting to the science of what we're talking about in these books and the science of what is now taken over in terms of the current understanding of how your body works from the skin on inward, which is something that I have been taking knives in the back for, arrows in the back for, because I've been teaching this for 20 years that the skin comes first. And they say, well, how were you teaching it, Dr. Inky, before the rest of modern science was able to catch up to you? Because I'm not programmed in the sense to just follow what I hear, right? I'm, I'm, I'm doing the studies and for me, it was a no brainer, right? Remember I have 10 babies, right? So, we're talking about studying real life. In real life, uh, a man's sperm cell fertilizes a woman's egg cell. Those cells come together. Marriage, right? Those cells come together and become one. That's where the whole marriage lingo comes from. Marriage lingo comes from bio, biology and biochemistry, right? So the sperm cell, which is of the man, finds the egg cell, which is of the woman, they come together and become one cell. That one cell goes through constant self-development. That is what life is. That one cell developing itself. So early on, that one cell develops, clones itself until you have a marula and a large grouping of cells, right? You go through the, the Fibonacci sequence, right? Then... You go, once you have a, enough cells, right? Once you have enough cells, um, some calculations, 30, you know, 32, 64, whatever. Once you have enough cells, then those cells then differentiate themselves slightly into three layers, right? And the reason I say slightly is because it's not a true differentiation. It's not like they're becoming specific cells, but they separate. Right. So you have the mesoderm, the endoderm and the ectoderm. These are three layers of skin. And then from these three layers of skin, everything else in your body comes from that. So as far as I was always concerned, skin is the most important part of the body. Skin. And that's the thing or one of the things that early on piqued my interest with Dr. Sabi because a lot of people was glazing Dr. Sabi and repeating, you know, verbatim what he was saying without understanding it. But what pulled me was that he was mentioning the mucous membrane. And I'm like, yo, the people that are parroting this, they don't even understand what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? He's talking about the skin. The problem with Sabi is he also says that melanin is not a real thing. So it's almost like he's throwing you off the trail once again, because once he says melanin is not a real thing, it it takes your mind off of the focus on the skin. Even though every time he said mucous membrane, he was talking about the skin because that's what the mucous membrane is. It's the inner layer to the body's skin. And inside the mucous membrane, not only do you have um, 
you know, a whole system to secrete bicarbonates, but that's also where candida is. That's also where candida is. And candida, you know, was like a, a selling point for a, a long time for people to sell herbs and detoxes. Oh, yeah, well, you got candida. You got to get the candida. And most people didn't understand the concept of candida either. They just knew it was something they wanted to get rid of. You know, especially women, no monostat seven and shit like that. So this the idea of candida, but candida is something that's good for your body in some instances. But it transforms. I ain't gonna say good for your body, but it's, it's you know, it, your body has a symbiotic relationship with candida up until the protective coat or the villi over the candida is broken and inflam inflammatory signals are able to reach the candida the candida then transforms into more of a fungal you know a more infectious type of thing in your body and then becomes problematic based on the mucous membrane being vulnerable and you know shit getting in there to start irritating the candida and then you know you have it. so I knew from the jump, people didn't know what they was listening to. You know what I'm saying? Especially since he kept saying, don't read any books. <laughs> don't read any books. <laughs> don't read any books, right? And melanin is not a real thing. Like he making sure nobody follows him. You know, nobody follows him, period. He trying to make sure this, this information dies with him. You know what I'm saying? And so now you got a whole bunch of kids, you know, and relatives that's trying to keep the thing alive, but they don't have the science. So a couple of those pages, like the main pages with the most followers, they watch. So when you see my videos and you see like maybe there's 40 people watching, but only 20 likes, that other half is a mixture between the people that's getting ready to steal this and repost it in different places <laughs> and the haters that just personally don't want to see me win even though i represent everything that they claim they represent right so That's what we gotta we gotta keep a, keep keep everything in sync and in tune, right? In sync, in tune. Make sure y'all go to the cash app. Make sure y'all go to the cash app. Hey, Charles, to get more than that interview. Oh lord, that's uh, crazy. Home, I get. I done got forty thousand for an interview. Damn. I went to California yep. last year. Uh. Right, right after the BET Awards, man. I was right, man, 40,000. Nigga, I, I, I did a, what, eight-hour interview. Faith and love. Yeah, yeah. And faith, yeah, yeah. And faith and love. Yeah, yeah. love. Right? Because we're exposing, listen, we're exposing the people that don't really want there to be growth in the community. I'm doing it single-handedly by challenging so many of these other platforms you're getting you're seeing pushback from other spaces meaning it's not just the O50s or the zips or whatever the case may be you're going to see other platforms that you thought were people centric or community centric that will be attacking me <laughs> never help no kids you never took over the neighborhood. You ain't, I'm building a school right now. You ain't building schools. What are y'all doing? Y'all up the internet tearing niggas down that's doing the shit for the kids. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Building schools. <laughs> for putting this information out, for doing this type of work, for being the person that challenges the people that need to be challenged, you know, I, I take the arrows and the knives, right? So in the book, right, in the book, in the books, we talk about these options 
right? But then we also talk about chlorophyll. And we also talk about um, vitamin A, right? And we talk about them in regards to how they function as they're floating through your body, right? So this is a big thing that we hadn't thought of. We hadn't discussed, right? And when I say we, I mean us as a people. I mean the globe over. I mean the scientific community, the holistic community, the naturopathic community, right? You don't really have a conversation around pigments post-digestion, right? So in this book, the photochemistry book, right? And that name is Nail Man. I knew this day would come, brother. Once you had sent me that 36-page, well-written treatise, I knew the drugs had worn off. I had to be as critical as possible so that maybe you would leave all this alone. See, we could leave all of that in the past, man. All I want to know is, does one times one equal two, man? You see... You just couldn't leave well enough alone, but you tell us. You know you can't just go around rewriting mathematics, right? It's not for us to do, Terrence. I have to get rid of you once and for all. You ain't gonna kill me, man. Oh, 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 I am. I am going to. Because there's only room for one black genius at a time, Terrence. And that black genius is gonna be...